to another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on free trade agreements. A free trade agreement is when two or more countries agree on rules that allow the free movement of goods and services between those countries. This allows them to avoid protectionist policies such as tariffs and quotas. Tariffs are an additional fee that a government charges on imports. These raise the price of imports, discouraging people from purchasing them. Quotas are where a certain amount of a good or service is able to be imported each year. At present, there are restrictions on Australian beef that mean there are quotas that say a certain amount can come in and then after this, no more will be accepted. However, a new free trade agreement is likely to remove those rules for Australian producers in the future. The European Free Trade Area, or EFTA for short, consists of all the countries in the EU, plus Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland. It not only guarantees the free movement of goods and services, but also capital and people. In order to allow the free movement of goods and services between countries in the EU, they must all agree to abide by the same standards and laws. These affect things like product safety standards. The EU also negotiates trade agreements with countries outside of the EU on behalf of all of its members. All members must abide by these agreements. The European Free Trade Area is intended to increase competition, labour specialisation and provide opportunities for firms within the area to achieve economies of scale. It does this by allowing goods and the factors of production to move to the areas where they're most valued. Estimates in 2019 suggested the single market GDP value for member countries was on average 9% higher than it would be if tariff and non-tariff restrictions were in place. Brexit was the name given to the process by which the UK left the EU. This also meant leaving the European free trade area and having to negotiate a new deal. This new deal is called the EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement. The EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement guarantees zero tariff and zero quota trade in goods, but this does not extend to services. This may lead to a problem in the future as the UK has a thriving at the moment financial services industry that relies on trade with the EU. Despite agreeing zero tariffs and zero quotas on the trade in goods, there can still be significant costs to businesses as exporters face additional border checks because the EU and the UK no longer agree on the rules and legislation and regulations surrounding the products that they're exchanging. These additional border checks, which take more time, can have a particularly large cost on producers that have products that have a short shelf life, such as people who export seafood to Europe. Having looked at some of the issues caused by Brexit, let's have a look now at some of the biggest drivers of support for having Brexit in the first place. One of the biggest topics for many people was immigration. People were particularly worried about immigration from Eastern Europe. As you can see from this chart, both in the lead up to the Brexit vote and since the Brexit vote, there has been a very big decline in EU net migration, with the largest being that from the group of countries that comes from Eastern Europe. Another commonly cited reason for wanting to go through Brexit was to get back control of our laws. Many people felt that we were stifled by having to follow EU laws and regulations. In the years since, we have actually not changed many of those laws back, but have started the process of being able to change them and create new laws in the future. One such area where we were thinking about new laws is the banking sector, although there is some debate over whether it is risky, the set of legislation that we're thinking about bringing in. Another key reason given for Brexit was to allow the UK to be able to pursue individual trade deals with other countries and not be locked into the deals created by the EU. The UK did an early deal with Japan, although this was considered to be very much a rolling over of the same deal they'd had with the EU. They also did a deal with Australia, although many people have criticised this deal, saying that the government didn't get enough in the deal. What hasn't materialised is a trade deal with the United States. 
This has been stalled due to their problems with the Northern Ireland Protocol. So you can see that some of the goals for Brexit have been reached and some of them are still yet to be achieved. That brings us to the end of this video on free trade agreements. Join me again soon when I'll be taking a look at the balance of payments. Use mrgoff.com to help you revise economics and until next time, it's bye for now.